We've all been there. When you call a trusted provider for help and you end up being constantly transferred and confused. And when you're in a time of need, the last thing you need is frustration and extra running around. These days, timely and effective communication is critical. So how can organizations streamline their contact centers or phone lines to ensure every caller gets the help they need precisely when they need it? Recently, I attended an event hosted by Genesis in Sydney called Experience, where they help their customers and partners learn how to drive meaningful outcomes and build deeper relationships with experience orchestration, enabling them to deliver personalized customer and employee experience at scale. During the event, I got to speak to Roy Hazelwood from Anglicare. And in this episode, we talk about the challenges and solutions in centralizing customer contact at Anglicare, the role of Genesis technology in enhancing service delivery, and training strategies to equip staff for handling stress and complex customer needs. Collaboration starts with a conversation, Team Health Tech. Let's make it happen. My name is Roy Hazelwood. I work for Anglicare. I manage the Customer Contact Centre, which has uh, 14 staff and handles about 8,000 interactions per month. Interesting. I know very much know of Anglicare and, uh, you know, many Australians would know that as well, but um, perhaps only would be familiar with um, Anglicare in particular context. Give me a little bit more um, information about uh, what Anglicare does in Australia. Well, in in the past, we had Anglicare Community Services, which used to focus mainly on the the services, um, you know, such as um, poverty, homelessness, and so on. And we had Anglican Retirement Villages, which was focused on independent living, which was more not-for-profit, but was focused on sales. Now, both of those organisations merged in 2016, and that's the point at which the contact centre centralised contact with our customers and inquirers for all the different services. That makes sense. And I would never have thought about the need, like the contact centre need uh, for an organisation like Anglicare. But as you kind of started to outline there, that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of engagement. So you need to be able to centralise that in some capacity. What does that look like? Is that a, a like a traditional call centre? What- well, we've, we've gone on to Genesis. So we basically have mainly people working from home, um, which some people see as a disadvantage. But the great thing is they can be on any telecom platform and so we have redundancy you know if there's a problem with optus or door telstra um basically there'll be some people who can still take the calls and so their their calls coming in from the general public um is there they're more than just telephone calls as well that you're dealing with? yes we, we when we started basically we started with uh voice chat sms and email and we rolled it out in the customer contact center and also our IT service desk, our internal um, service provision. And I did that mainly to prove the credibility of the platform because immediately our own employees had an improvement in the service they received internally. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was thinking from an external side, but the, the um, yeah, like I guess if you're providing a lot of IT services within the business, they're, they're, they're the internal customers need to make sure that, that uh, the ones that are providing the the care, as it were, or the, or the services have got the tools they need to be able to do it. Is that right? Well, that's true. And it provided a platform to further expand Genesis because I knew it would be a great platform to unify the different areas in the company. It gave a great opportunity to then expand to our Anglicare at Home services and our, out to the offices for our counselling, mediation, youth services and those sorts of areas as well. It's a bit of, yeah, there's a, a few different settings that Anglicare provide um, services and care, uh, as you kind of outlined there too, um, inside people's homes as well. So I guess that's going to be important that you've got that technology piece to kind of um, make that information available internally so that you can in turn share that with the, the end customers. Is that right? How- that, that is correct. Our main value is we connect people to the right service the first time. If you're in a, in a chaotic situation where you've got people calling about 40 different services... You can get into the mode of listening to respond rather than listening to understand, and that's absolutely key. If you can actually understand the person's needs, you're going to be much better at answering them. So, And so you're, you're dealing also with, I imagine, um, a varying degree of, of demographics in terms of the general public that might engage with services. I imagine those that might need services 
carers, um, other stakeholders involved. Um, how do you find um, the like? How do you enable your team to be able to, I guess, adapt to the different needs and and capabilities of the the, the customers that you're engaging with? We do a lot of um, a ride along type of training. I mean, they get scripting and the basic training and how to use the platform. But um, and she's here at the conference with us today, um, Cheryl, our team leader. And um, she's brilliant. She gets them to listen in on her calls and coaches them when they go on the phone. And progressively, we, we start them off on a simple cue um, and then add the more difficult cues to, to that person and just keep assessing them as they go. The other thing we do is we make sure that they have um, accidental counsellor training, things that help them deal with the more stressful calls. We do get lifeline-type calls as well. And, you know, so we get them to do the lifeline course. So if someone phones up and, and says they're thinking of committing suicide, they, they ask them very direct questions um, to, and then get them onto the right area, um, which is another key thing we do as well. We don't just say, oh, we don't do that. We actually have in our knowledge base um, reference points to go to, such as askizzy.com, which is a... a an interactive um, portal, if you like, for people looking for uh, emergency accommodation and food and things like that. So if we can't service it, then we try to point them in the right direction. What are the, um, like, a- every different organisation's uh, customers have different levels of, I guess, appetite for technology or ways to engage with the organization and we're in this age of and you know we're looking at some of the exciting new emerging technologies that uh, are available um in the market where are you like you know there's stuff that needs to be done on a day to day, and there are like the general needs of of the humans that need care how do you think about i guess some of these cool emerging technologies that are becoming available have the potential to i guess have an impact like ai um, but then balancing that with the, the quite, to me, quite obvious need that people have to, to engage with a human? For, at, at a very high level, um, deflection plays a very important part of using the technology. So if somebody, for instance, is sleeping rough in their car with their kids because of a domestic violence issue and they're looking for food and financial assistance, a hamper or something, we have a whole organisation for that. So we don't want to actually make them have to tell their story twice so when they phone in select that it goes automatically out to that organization so that's using the ivr i think you know the level zero or level one beyond that in the chat scenario someone might just want to know is um is castle hill or glenhaven pet friendly when they want to look into buying a retirement you know villa (laughs) and that often it'll be the daughter of the person or the son of the person actually inquiring about it and they're on chat and so you can have a chat bot there to actually respond to that and we're looking at doing that at the moment having a parallel the same as our four four option ivr doing the same tree pattern in the in the chat so that it's consistent as well um so some things get deflected some things go directly off to the services that they need to and uh, some will have simple answers but always an exit point to a human is very important, right? Yeah, you've always got that human in the loop, I guess, of the the um, the oversight or, or the fallback then to ensure that I guess no one gets left behind. Yeah, yeah. And the the other key thing is privacy as well, um, because unfortunately, some people go hunting for for auntie's money. Occasionally, you do get that scenario as well, but that's fairly rare. But uh, if they don't know where, if they if they say I'm looking for Aunt Molly, and they don't know which village that they're in, then all we can do is say, if she's in the village, we'll let her know that you're called and it's up to her whether she contacts you. Yeah. So you need that human nuance or at least uh, the the intelligence behind it to kind of um, assess those those situations that are on on a case by case. So I can see how tying those two things together, because I imagine that there's there's benefit in some of these technologies to uh, aggregate some of the servers or at least help people through because I can only predict that the the demand on you know the the incoming queries is only getting more for you is that right it is it is and it's often driven by crisis 
uh, particularly you know Christmas and holidays when they actually go and see Nan and find out she's been cleaning the clothes on the stove in a pot, you know that sort of thing. But with with the in terms of artificial intelligence and all of that, you also have to have some simple rules. So if it gets the question, if it asks asks a question to clarify something where the person is calling and it gets it wrong three times, you exit to a human. And if they ask five times and it gets it right, then you also es- ex- escalate to a human because it's too complex. You know, so yeah, yeah, I, interesting. I'd love to learn then about the like, thinking forward. Lastly, Roy, that um, I, I guess in the context of all these cool technologies coming, the daily kind of challenges that you have, or the realities that you have in terms of the the services you provide. Um, what are you most looking forward to? I guess hoping to implement, or or, or what's kind of going to be driving some change over the coming months and years for for Anglica? Yeah, ideally, I'd love to have Copilot scrape our website and actually generate you know question answers and things like that so that then the single source of truth would be the website which is one place to update and you wouldn't have to duplicate but in reality at the moment what i'd like to do is help our agents with information from i guess knowledge base 2.0 in in genesis um, but also have a portal that allows staff who are out in the villages who have residents coming up and asking where do i donate furniture can go and chat with us and get an automated response you can donate furniture, adapter, and, and narrow because the other shops are too small to take furniture. And just be able to answer things really quickly, it raises their confidence in the organisation and it, it's great for the customers too. There's all these cool, t- cool opportunities for the technology to, I guess, uh, address these unmet needs or, or areas that put pressure on that if it means alleviating the burden on the, um, the people doing the caring, it might allow them to have more consumer-facing time we're actually value-adding yeah, activities. Correct, right. correct, yeah. And it's basically has to be, you, you probably heard it a couple of times, people say, take your time, get it right, because it's quite an exposure. So first of all, get the agent assist right so that it recognises chat and also voice so that it could surface the right knowledge articles for the agents, which helps them speed up and reduce average call handling time and all of those good things. But it also means that they're not flustered trying to search for information. Um, and then secondly, extend that knowledge and make it available to the other 4,000 staff who are out there in shops and, and villages and things so they can easily help, help uh, people who are making inquiries. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Talking Health Tech. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this episode with someone who might find it valuable. For more information and resources about healthcare innovation, visit TalkingHealthTech.com.